Oh, good morning, friends. Welcome to uh, week number 10 of this short series I'm doing called Life in 200 Seconds. And um, those of you who uh, remember last week, I introduced a story about a, a slave who was forgiven uh, by a man. And, and I kind of liken that to a topic called grace. And I said I would come back this week and kind of start to unpack this, this topic of grace a little bit for us. I think the best way for me to do that is maybe start with a little story. And I'm going to start with a story about a man named Joe and a woman named Emily. And I'm going to use Emily because Emily is my granddaughter's name. And I'm hoping one day when she gets older, she might have a chance to watch some of these things her grandpa did <laughs> and kind of get a picture of who he was. Anyway, so this Joe and Emily, they were married, see? And uh, Joe becomes unfaithful to Emily. <laughs> wow. And Emily says to Joe, I forgive you. But what she's really saying to him is, you know, I'm saying I'm forgiving you, but in my heart, what I'm really saying is, I'm going to just watch for a while and see if you really are going to get better, if you're going to do what you say you're going to do, and, and uh, are you going to repay me for all the sins you've done against me? So is that forgiveness? Uh, I don't know. In our current way of thinking, uh, maybe that is the way of, of thinking that's forgiveness. So, um, and so that's really not, of course, grace. Uh, let me kind of rephrase the story a little bit. Let's just say Emily says to Joe, hey, Joe, I forgive you. And instead of just saying, I forgive you, she then goes on to just take all those thoughts out of her head. They're gone. She throws them away and they don't exist anymore. She just is, she doesn't bring the topic up ever again. She just goes on as if nothing has ever happened. Well, I know what you're thinking. That's kind of foolish, right? That's kind of reckless because, uh, after all, how do we know Joe's not going to just do it again? And um, what's to prevent him from that? In fact, it may be even encourage him to, to hurt her further in the future. So um, that's kind of what we think is the way life is. And so, but really, if she does that, that's more closely to what grace really is. So what is grace anyway? What is it? When we think of this topic of grace, many people in the religious mindset think of this unmerited favor of God. Well, that's a nice bunch of words, but it doesn't really mean a lot to us. So what, uh, what really happens in grace is that forgiveness comes and a love comes that we didn't know existed before. But can God really forgive us the same way that I've just described Emily forgiving Joe, put it, putting it out of her mind, forgetting about it forever? Well, the Bible kind of talks about that, that that's kind of how Jesus and God actually operate. In fact, there's a scripture that says, um, the Father judges no one, and he's given all authority for judgment to the Son. That's John 5, 22. You know, but then it gets, really, gets kind of wild because what happens next is Jesus then comes on the scene and he says, hey, anyone who hears my sayings and doesn't follow them or, or heed them, I, I won't hold that against them. So he forgives us. So isn't it strange? So God isn't judging us and Jesus isn't judging us, but that's how we are. We're judgmental. That's what we do when we say we forgive somebody. We say, oh, I think they're going to do it again. And I gotta, I've got to you know, protect myself. But that isn't the way God behaves. That isn't the way Jesus behaves. In fact, it gets even more wild than that because Jesus says you can't even judge yourself. You can't even self-condemn yourself. And so, uh, <laughs> and so this subject of grace, it gets deeper and deeper all the time. In fact, that's why in John 3, 17, just after Jesus has, done the, has talked about this great thing that, that uh, he's come into the world, he says the Father didn't send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but he came into the world to save the world. And anyone who believes in the Son is no longer condemned. And anyone who doesn't believe the Son is already condemned, for they haven't believed in the only Son of God that I've sent. Wow. 
So the thing that really condemns you is not Jesus and it's not God. He's not going to judge you. He's not judging you now in this world. He won't judge you in the next. What is judging you is something quite different. Jesus tells us later on that he isn't judging you. What is judging you is Moses. <laughs> and Moses, you know, but he's not really saying that Moses is the accuser and that he's really judging you. He's really saying that the things that Moses brought into the world, all the religious um, regulations, all the laws, all of those things, are the things that will condemn you. So when you stand in judgment someday in the future, it won't be standing before God who will judge you. It won't be standing before Jesus who will judge you. You'll just be standing in the very word of God. And if you've been disobedient to the word of God, that's the judgment. Unless, unless there's someone with authority, that authority to judge you and the authority to forgive you. And that authority has been given to the Son. And the Son doesn't condemn you. The Son really only wants to love you. And he forgives you if you just simply believe in him and follow him. And he'll lead you through life. And you know, this, this crazy thing called grace will just take us to a, to a new place. And uh, it's a place that I, I think we all want to go. This reckless kind of grace that God has, you know, it, it's, it's unending. It's, 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 un, uh, it's, it's beyond our imagination. It's unconditional. It's never ending. It's forever. This is the God who promises to love us. And that's the God that that is giving us that forgiveness, that grace of God. So I want you to come back next week because I think a lot of us are listening to this and we've got to say, well, gee whiz, I thought God was going to judge us. And number two is, if God isn't going to judge us because he loves us, how can he love me like that? How can God be so much in love with me? Because it leads you to this dark place where you say, you say those things, that God can't love me because if he only knew what I did, he knows what you've done. He loves you. How can he love you like that? Well, come on back next Tuesday at 9 a.m. I want to keep exploring this concept of grace with you and go deeper into the subject of love that God has for you and I. Bye for now. See you next week. 